Humans have visited the moon. There are people orbiting the Earth in a space station at this very moment. Billions of dollars are spent to leave Earth. But there's one country that decided to also go the other way. China. It is on a mission to venture deep into the Earth itself. But what are its motivations? Is this a real-world exploration that promises to redefine our understanding of the planet? Or are they after the next precious finite resource? Is it even possible to dig deep into the Earth? And more importantly, what will China find down there? How deep will they be able to drill? And what are the chances for it to unleash a volcanic spectacle? Whatever might happen, geologists are getting excited about gaining new insight to our understanding of our planet. This is New Nature. And in this video, we try to find out why China wants to drill the world's deepest hole, why previous attempts have failed, and what this effort could unlock for science, for humanity, and for the world. In the Sichuan Basin in the southwest, some of China's best engineers are digging a hole that's over 30,000 feet deep, approximately 9,000 meters. That's deeper than any ocean, and even taller than Mount Everest, They've also started another project in the Tarim Basin, up in northwest China. This one will be even deeper. They're planning to reach 36,000 feet deep. That's about 11,000 meters, or 0.09% of the Earth's diameter. If they pull it off, these holes will be some of the deepest ever dug by humans. But why is China digging so deep? China is on a dual mission. On one hand, the goal is scientific exploration. Imagine the Earth's crust as a historical timeline. Each layer represents a chapter in the story of our planet's formation. By drilling into these layers, we're essentially going deeper into Earth's history, uncovering its secrets layer by layer. And then there are also commercial interests, as deep within these layers lie potentially lucrative energy reserves. By tapping into these buried treasures, China may secure a vital energy source that can fuel its growth and development. Chinese President Xi Jinping initiated this Deep Earth Exploration Initiative in 2021, emphasizing its importance to the country's leading scientists. The ultimate goal of this epic drilling endeavor is to reach material that formed more than 145 million years ago. The insights from these ancient layers can provide useful data for geoscience research helping us understand Earth's internal structure and evolution. This project has the potential to not only revolutionize scientific understanding, but also to help assess environmental risks. By studying the deep layers, scientists can gain insights into environmental hazards like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. When the drill is completed, it may not quite reach the same depth as the deepest hole humans have ever made. That title still belongs to the Russian Kola Super Deep Borehole. It's still about 4,000 feet or one kilometer deeper than what China plans on digging right now. To be specific, the Kola Super Deep Borehole has a depth of 40,200 feet. That's about 12,300 meters, and it took the Russians more than two decades to get to that depth. China's ambitious drilling project into the Earth's crust may not end up being the world's deepest borehole, but it's going to be a monumental technical feat, to say the least, considering the time frame during which China plans to complete the drill. But to understand the difficulty of drilling to such astonishing depths, we need to rewind and look down the Kola Super Deep Borehole, the deepest hole humans have ever drilled. Why is it so hard to drill to such great depth? These images are from the archives of the Pechenga district, where this remarkable endeavor took place. The project kicked off in May 1970, and work continued until 1994. Why the long run? They had to dig five separate boreholes in total due to mechanical failures and breakdowns. However, despite these equipment breakdowns and failures, the Kola Super Deep Borehole proved more than worthwhile. As they burrowed down, scientists uncovered some real surprises. Nope, not that. 
they found water and hydrogen at depths they hadn't anticipated. Also, at about 19,685 feet, that's 6,000 meters below the surface, they stumbled upon microscopic plankton fossils. And Russian scientists also found water seeping into greater depths than thought to be possible. But that's not all. Instead of finding basalt under the continents granite as they expected, scientists found metamorphic rock below the igneous layer. This type of rock, changed by heat and pressure, was important proof for the idea of plate tectonics, which was a relatively new theory when they started drilling the borehole. This discovery highlights how important these drillings can be in our understanding of the Earth's crust. However, when we zoom out to consider the full scale of the Earth, it becomes clear that the Kola borehole, despite its impressive depth, has barely scratched the surface. But if we ever do reach further down and into the mantle, it's likely that long-held beliefs and ideas will be challenged and transformed. So, what exactly happens when we venture even deeper into Earth? If the drillers eventually reach the mantle, don't worry, you won't see hot molten rock gushing up the hole like a volcanic eruption. The mantle rocks do flow, but their movement is as gradual as the growth of a fingernail. The Earth's mantle lies deep beneath our feet, yet nobody has directly observed it yet. Our Earth is like a layered cake, with the mantle being one of its largest layers. To put it into perspective, the crust, the thin shell we call home, makes up just 1% of Earth's volume. The core, composed mainly of heavy elements like iron and nickel, accounts for a mere 15%. But the mantle? It's the heavyweight, claiming a whopping 68% of Earth's mass and an astounding 85% of its volume. It is made out of rock, though, and not liquid magma, as you might think. Under the high temperatures and pressures within the Earth's interior, rocks can actually flow. Although they seem static for us, over geological timescales spanning millions of years, these rocks gradually move. Imagine the mantle as a colossal lava lamp, minus the lava. Material near the boundary between the core and mantle heats up, becomes less dense, and rises like bubbles in a lava lamp. These buoyant plumes journey towards the Earth's crust's lower edge. There, they flow along the ceiling until they cool down and make their way back towards the core. But here's the catch. The mantle's movements are incredibly slow. In fact, it might take as long as two billion years for one round trip from the crust to the core and back. There are still a lot of unanswered questions about the mantle. Many of these could be solved if we manage to access it directly, for example, through a borehole. Unearthing a pristine piece of the mantle would be equivalent to landing on the moon in scientific terms. It's like having a cheat code to decipher Earth's origins. This unique sample would reveal the raw materials from which our planet formed. Moreover, studying the mantle's composition could unlock the mysteries of Earth's formation and its evolution into the complex planet we know today. But how do scientists know that the mantle even exists and what it's made of without ever holding a physical sample? Here's the deal. Earthquakes generate seismic waves, and by studying their paths and speeds, we can deduce the mantle's density, viscosity, and properties. Scientists were also able to measure the rate at which Earth's crust bounces back after a colossal ice sheet melts which offers insights into the physics and processes below the surface. Pretty incredible. And by measuring Earth's magnetic and gravitational fields, scientists can narrow down the types of minerals and substances deep down underground. Also, scientists have managed to obtain actual mantle samples, despite never having drilled that deep. How is this possible? Here's the deal. The mantle samples in our possession have embarked on remarkable journeys of their own. 
Some were ejected by volcanic eruptions, others rose through tectonic plate collisions, and a few surfaced along mid-ocean ridges. But here's the catch. Our existing mantle samples have been altered by their interaction with air and seawater and are no longer the same as they were deep inside the Earth. That's why scientists are on the hunt for a piece of the mantle that hasn't been touched at all. Drilling and extracting it could unlock some of Earth's deepest secrets. Consider this. An untouched mantle sample could unlock secrets about density and how it conducts heat and seismic waves. Directly comparing this with our current assumptions might just confirm or overturn what we think we know about the Earth's mantle. An exciting possibility. With so many unanswered questions and so much hidden treasure beneath our feet, why haven't we ventured deeper into our very own planet? The reason is quite straightforward. Attempts have been made, but they weren't very successful to say the least. Back during the Cold War, there was a spirited competition to drill as deep as possible. Just like the space race, the Deep Frontier quest back then was a show of engineering prowess and cutting-edge technology. The United States was the first to dive into deep drilling. In the late 1950s, a group known as the American Miscellaneous Society, made up of some of the brightest scientific minds in the U.S., hatched the first serious plan to drill down to the Earth's mantle. Their mission, called Project Moholy, was named after the Mohorovicic discontinuity, which marks the boundary between the Earth's crust and its mantle. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of drilling an incredibly deep hole, the American expedition decided on a shortcut. They aimed to go through the Pacific Ocean floor off Guadalupe Island in the Pacific. The advantage is that the Earth's crust is thinner at this location, simplifying drilling. However, it requires reaching the ocean's bottom first before beginning to drill into the crust. The Soviets joined the adventure on the Kola Peninsula in Russia in 1970, while in 1990, the German Continental Deep Drilling Program began drilling deep beneath Bavaria. Reaching depths of 29,800 feet, approximately 9,100 meters. Both of these ambitious missions faced a common challenge. They had to invent new technologies from scratch while the project was already well underway. It's a bit like building a rover for a moon mission while you've already got the rocket fueled up on the launch pad, where everything has to be designed and created from the ground up. Back in the early 1960s, when Project Mohol aimed to drill into the seabed, crucial drilling technologies like dynamic positioning, which keeps a drill ship steady over a well, simply didn't exist at that time. So, engineers had to get imaginative and found solutions like adding propellers to their drill ship to keep it stable over the borehole. One of the key challenges the German engineers faced was keeping their boreholes as vertical as possible. They found a solution that's now used everywhere in the oil and gas industry. Another great example of the indirect benefits from ambitious scientific projects. Despite their incredible efforts, these drilling missions faced numerous challenges. They had false starts, blockages, and battled extremely high temperatures deep underground. The costs could spiral out of control, and the political landscape often complicated matters. These hurdles made it tough for scientists to dive even deeper and set new records. For instance, two years before Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, the U.S. Congress had to cancel Project Mohole due to ballooning costs. Then there's the story of the Kola Superdeep Borehole. Why did the current record holder not get any further down? Drilling stopped in 1992, when temperatures unexpectedly reached 180 degrees Celsius, or 356 degrees Fahrenheit. This intense heat was more than just a minor inconvenience, it pushed their drilling equipment to the brink. The machinery began to falter, and the drill bits wore out quickly under such extreme conditions. Drilling further into the borehole 
meant needing new, expensive technologies for diminishing scientific gains. Budget that was simply no longer available with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Three years later, the entire facility was shut down. Today, it's a destination for adventurous tourists. But the German borehole has had a different fate. Its equipment is still standing and the site has become a tourist attraction. The massive drill rig has been repurposed into a crane that lowers instruments for measurement. The United States also didn't entirely quit its drilling efforts after Project Mahole. It eventually launched the Deep Sea Drilling Project that operated from 1968 to 1983. This international program was a huge success. It significantly advanced our geological knowledge, providing critical evidence for continental drift and seafloor spreading. These findings were instrumental in affirming the theory of plate tectonics and set the stage for future ocean drilling projects. And now, after many years, China has taken the baton, signaling its readiness for success. By beginning work on two super deep holes, they are making a statement to the Western world. China stands out with substantial financial resources and a relatively short project timeline of around 15 months. They are well prepared for success and may even break new records. If they achieve their goals with these two drills, will they go the next step and try to reach the Earth's mantle? For now, we'll observe and see how they progress with these two holes. While some of it might be politically motivated, these drilling endeavors are primarily about pushing our understanding of our planet on a deeper level. Every new layer we uncover adds to our collective wisdom. Looking back through the history of boreholes, it becomes clear that drilling deep isn't just about digging holes. It's about satisfying a deep hunger to know the unknown, to see what's never been seen, and to go where no one has gone before. In this relentless pursuit, we often stumble upon unexpected solutions to our most critical challenges. One such potential breakthrough is the discovery of a potent untapped clean energy source. One that does not come from the skies, but from the depths of the planet. Supercritical geothermal energy. Buried up to 20 kilometers beneath the Earth's surface lies this giant natural battery. This energy source is as potent as fossil fuels and as clean as solar, wind, or hydro with a smaller land footprint, offering benefits like preserving forests and protecting wildlife. If we could access supercritical geothermal energy on a global scale, it could lift billions from energy poverty, significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and create millions of jobs. All we need to do now is to overcome this engineering challenge of thrilling to such great depth. If you found this fascinating, please consider subscribing.